Hi, my name is Ames Gross, and I am the president of Pacific Bridge Medical. To learn more about Pacific Bridge Medical, please see our website indicated on this slide. Pacific Bridge Medical has put together a number of sh short webinars to help drug device biotech companies learn more about the Asian medical markets. This is our first, first webinar and an introduction to Asia. Thank you for attending. Next slide. I started Pacific Bridge Medical in 1988. Since then, we have helped over 500 medical companies with regulatory affairs, product registration, business development, M&A, due diligence, and sourcing and quality issues in Asia. We are very knowledgeable about the Asian healthcare markets and have a great team on the ground in Asia with various medical specialties. Next slide. This is a map of Asia. I'm sure a lot of people viewing this uh, webinar have seen, have been to Asia or are familiar with the countries, but it's important to keep in mind that Asia is a large geographic area with a large population. Next slide. These, this slide goes through some of the demographic trends in Asia. Asia has about 30% of the world's earth area, but its population of about 5 billion people is about 60% of the world's population. India at 1.41 billion people is now, has now more people than China. This just occurred last year. Many Asian societies are aging quickly and thus need better medical devices, drugs, and healthcare services. Asians are living longer, flocking to big and medium-sized cities for better employment opportunities. Next slide. This slide talks about the economic statistics in Asia in 2022. You can see the countries in Asia on the left, on the bottom is the United States, and also at the bottom is the European Union. On the first column, per capita income, you can see that the per capita income in China is almost $13,000 now. That's up from about $5,000 five years ago. People in China are getting wealthier. After China, if you look at the other wealthy Asian countries, they would be Hong Kong, Japan, Singapore, Korea, and Taiwan. All these countries have quite a bit of money to spend on healthcare. Poor countries would include India, Indonesia, uh, Vietnam. These countries are poor countries and have less resources spent on healthcare. On the second column, you can see the GDP on a PPP basis. The United States still has the largest economy, followed closely by China and then the European Union. On the third column, you can see the real GDP growth rates. You can see that China has slowed down dramatically in 2022 to 3.2%. That's largely because of the COVID uh, experience in China over the last few years. And you can see that the growth is normally higher in the more developing countries like Indonesia and the Philippines. Next slide. When you're looking at Asia and you're trying to do work in the different Asian markets, you have to take a look at the ethnic diversity in the different Asian countries. So you can better understand the countries and be more successful with your medical business in each of those Asian countries. Japan and Korea are very homo homogeneous. They have very small minority populations. China is 92% Han, and then over 50 national minority groups make up the remaining 8%. Singapore and Malaysia have very mixed ethnic diversity in each of these two countries. You can see in Malaysia, 50% Malay, 25% Chinese, 7% Indian. I think the other countries are fairly 
self-explanatory, but keep in mind Asian ethnic diversity and the fact that countries are quite different. And when you're di dealing with different Asian countries, you want to take in, into effect the, the ethnic diversity, the differences in religious religion, and also the differences in their histories. Next slide. This slide looks at the size of the medical device markets in 2022. As you can see, the largest market again is the United States, followed by the European Union. But Asia Pacific now would be the third largest market in the world, and that's largely because of China. On the right side, you can see the size of the markets for each Asian medical device market. And you can see out of the Asia Pacific, not including Japan, China would be the third largest market in the world today. Followed by Japan is the fourth largest medical device market in, in the world. And then some of the other Asian markets are below too. You can also take a look at the pie chart below, which gives you the same information in a different uh, graphic. Next slide. This slide talks about the size of the pharmaceutical markets in 2022. And some of the same dynamics we had, we just saw on the device markets in Asia apply to the pharmaceutical markets. The US again has the largest market and European has the second pharmaceutical, largest pharmaceutical market followed by China at $145 billion, which is larger than the Japanese pharmaceutical market at $110 million on the right column. You can see more specific market sizes, drug market sizes on the other Asian markets on the chart on the right. Next slide. Then we're going to talk about some of the government trends in healthcare in Asia. More Asian governments are trying to provide minimum healthcare or a safety net to their entire populations. For example, just in the last few years, a couple of the poorer countries like Indonesia and Philippines have mandated universal health care for its people. Of course, this universal health care is a relatively low level, but at least now everyone is eligible in these markets. Keep in mind that in Asia, you don't have uh, a variety of different insurance companies uh, paying for health care. The Asian governments are the single payers, single payers, so the price cuts, so, so in Asia now you see, you continue to see price cuts. And again, there's very little private insurance, although private insurance is growing in Asia. On the last bullet point, Asian health authorities are trying to make it easier to register foreign products that they cannot provide on their own to their own populations. I would say this is the case in general, except for China and the medical device market. China is building its own domestic medical device market to compete with the Western medical device markets. Next slide. Here we're talking about some Asian medical device market trends. Keep in mind that there's still a strong demand for Western medical devices, especially for unique and sophisticated products. However, over the last 10 years, locally made Asian devices are now more competitive than ever. This is specifically true in China, which is now making a lot of the, a lot of the same medical devices that are made in the West. Local Asian medical device companies are making better components and finished devices, including things like drug eluding stents. Registration for devices in China is getting tougher and taking longer. Registering a class two device in China now can take as long as 18 to 24 months. And keep in mind that most new technologies or unique products that are being shipped to Asia still need local clinical trials for approval in China and Japan. But more foreign data is being accepted, uh, especially for bigger Western companies in these markets. Next slide. This slide talks about Asian pharmaceutical market trends. So similar to devices, there's still a strong demand for new and unique drugs from the West. Local generic competition is intense. And as everyone knows on the call, most APIs 
and some excipients are still coming from India and China. Drug registration in China is getting easier, but pricing of drugs in China is getting tougher. Foreign multinational drug companies still have strong appetite for China's newly discovered molecules, and there's a strong increase of outlicings of China drugs by large Western drug companies. Japan price cuts for drugs have continued, although Japanese, the Japanese government is trying to stabilize the prices, especially for new therapies. Next slide. Again, this is our first short webinar on an introduction to the Asian medical markets. Our next presentations will cover the Japan medical device registration process, the China pharmaceutical registration process, the Japan medical device reimbursement process, and the China pharm pharmaceutical reimbursement uh, process. Thank you for your attending today, and we look forward to you attending another Pacific Bridge Medical webinar. Thank you.